For my next experiment, I have these two switch mode power supplies. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take both of these supplies and I'm going to connect them to a small uh, load resistor like this. And I'm going to connect a scope and we're going to do a fast Fourier transform on this. All right, I've hooked up the power supply uh, output to this Tektronix uh, 50 megahertz scope. I've limited the bandwidth on channel one uh, to 20 megahertz, and I'm using cursors uh, to identify. Hold on, stop. I'm using these cursors to identify the frequency. So it's about 60 hertz or so. Uh, if I click on Fourier transforms, so this it gives me uh, the uh, Fourier transform with my Hanning window employed, and there we go. So if I do stop again, uh, go into cursors. Uh, for your transform cursors and uh, frequency one and uh, there we go so cursor one is about 60 Hertz I expect it to be 120 Hertz and the next 125 Hertz or 120 Hertz so on and so forth uh, so this is this works relatively simplistic now I'm going to try the same thing on the Roden Schwartz all right, so I've got the same power supply connected to uh, the Roden Schwartz. Channel one is at uh, AC coupling and bandwidth is at 20 megahertz limited. So basically both of them are, um, are working on the same kind of uh, uh, scale, right? Well, uh, the memory depth of this thing is relatively large. So what I've done is I've restricted uh, the record length uh, to uh, 10 kilo samples. Uh, this should affect my sampling rate, I'm guessing. Uh, in it, so what I'm gonna do is now uh, I'm gonna scale it down just a little bit. So that's about it. Stop acquisition and go into Fourier transform. Just press the Fourier transform button. <coughs> so now uh, that's the Fourier transform. Clicking on that, scale into it, and there we go. So already I can see that it's pointing to 61 hertz. I use cursors. Press the cursor button. Uh, the cursor menu pops up. The cursor is now uh, type is FFT spectrum. There's a bug here that I want to highlight. Uh, the cursor is now horizontal type. So cursor is supposed to be these uh, uh, delta T. So uh, when I do horizontal cursors, it should be these two vertical lines. Unfortunately, the cursors that I get are these, uh, which really don't make a lot of sense. Uh, if I go it back into the cursor menu, if I put it on vertical, the cursors are supposed to be a vertical delta. So the labeling is correct, but the wrong type of cursors kind of uh, pop out. <laughs> How weird is that? Anyways, uh, going back. So uh, put cursor one right about here. Uh, it says it's at F1 is 546 hertz. No, uh, no, take a look at this. So cursor one is at 60 hertz, but this thing says cursor one is at 560 hertz. If I move this around, No, that's wrong. So, big burner, big problems. Sorry about the squeaky noise again. All right, <clears throat> so if I scale it in again, uh, just click here, scale in once more. Now it's back to where it's supposed to be. So just zoom in. So, there we go. So now the cursor, scale is somehow corrected. How about that? So I've seen this happening with a number of things and Rune Schwartz really needs to take care of this uh, connected menu refresh stuff and all that. So just go back here. All right, so the first harmonic here, I'm gonna center it at zero hertz, shift it there. Uh, delta, the first harmonic is at about uh, 60 hertz as expected. 
uh, second cursor about 120 so that kind of analysis is okay doing this kind of a live is gonna go kokamanga crazy but that this little thing drove me crazy about the first 15 minutes as to why I couldn't get the cursors right and so on and so forth. The other problem, of course, was the vertical and the horizontal cursor thing. That was confusing. Uh, another thing, uh, if I go into cursors, if I do channel one, now it's showing up, but there's a glitch somewhere, there's a button. Uh, disable the fast Fourier transform, re-enable the fast Fourier transform. No, it's, there we go. <coughs> so you can see. Uh, so this is the bug I was talking about. You can see this is the uh, signal itself, and this is signal, and this is the Fourier transform. So overlapped onto each other. I don't know if this is a bug or a feature, but yeah, all right. I mean, whatever you think. Now they get separated and so on and so forth. All right, so this is the second uh, power supply unit. You can see there's a lot less noise here and there really isn't a lot going on, uh, especially under the uh, 50, uh, 5 dBm uh, limit. So this power supply is relatively cleaner. It, there's a cost to it. But that's the analysis of if I just plug out the module <coughs> and replace it with the other one uh, there we go so there's the other power supply so this is a lot more noisier than the more expensive one so there's a difference between the uh, SMPS and how it affects the performance of your embedded system if I were to add, use a microcontroller and ADC and uh, without any filtering this would really cause havoc in my system so that's about the gist of Fourier transform now I can do capture and all that according to an analysis and reporting very easily.